Hello friends, in this video we are going to be talking about stack overflow error. In order to talk about stack overflow error, we first need to understand the JVM memory regions, right? Friends, let me start this off with a question. Does your Java process memory utilization goes beyond XMX? XMS stands for maximum heap size. So if you are configuring XMX as 5 GB, will your Java process consume more than 5 GB? Think about it. Let's try to answer this question. Not to answer this question, we want to understand the JVM internal memory regions, right? For initially, the JVM has two regions. One is called as a young generation and other is called as a old generation. All newly created objects goes into this young generation. And if they happen to survive for a longer period, then they are promoted from this young generation to the old generation. Right? When you set XMX, you are actually only setting the size of young generation and old generation only. After that, there is another region called meta space. This meta space contains the metadata information that are required to execute your application, like your class definitions, method definitions. They go into this meta space. And after that, there is another region. Some people call it different names. Some people call it off heap, native memory, right? But for our discussion, let's call it as others. In this others region is where the threads are stored, right? Application needs threads. The threads are stored in this others region. And then in Java, the garbage collection is automatic. To do that automatic garbage collection, you need memory. That memory is coming from this others region. And also, you did a, the code that we write as a developer is not the actual code that's executed by the JVM at runtime. The JVM does a lot of hot spot optimizations to improve your code's performance. That needs memory. That memory is coming from this others region. And also our application, a lot of customers connects to our application that needs connection objects, socket buffers. And our application talks with multiple backend system of records. That needs connections. That needs memory. Those are all coming from this others region. And also if you happen to talk with JNI, Java native interface, native applications, that needs memory. That is coming from the others region. So friends, these are the four regions which is there. So when you set XMX, actually your Java application is going to consume more than that XMX limit, right? Okay, so now equipped with this knowledge, let's go about looking at the stack overflow error. What triggers the stack overflow error? So for our discussion, I've come up with an hypothetical program. Let's execute this program and then it will, it's going to make us very clear on how, how the stack overflow error is going to happen. Okay. So friend, this is an hypothetical program. It's called as a simple example. It has a main method, which is an entry point to any Java application. This method invokes method A and this method A has a primitive data type X, a local variable, which is assigned to value one. And this method is invoking method B. And you can see this method B is instantiating a complex data type, an object, a car object. And then it's invoking method C. And if you see this method C, it is in, it, it is initializing a local variable Z, which is of primitive data type float, and it's assigning a value 2.11f. That's all it is. It's a very hypothetical program, right? Now let's get on. How JVM is going to execute this program? Friends, there is a thread, right? Every program needs to be executed by a thread. In this case, this red arrow indicates it's a thread, right? For our discussion, let's uh, visualize this, this red arrow to be a thread. Now a thread comes. When a thread comes, in which region of memory are the threads created? Is it in the young generation, old generation, or meta space, or others? As per our earlier discussion, it is created in the others. So every thread will have a stack. See, look at this, there's a stack. And this stack is present in the others region. And when a thread now enters this main method, automatically a stack frame is created. Into the stack frame, this main method is added. Right? Now thread is now in main method. Now it sees the main method is invoking method A. Now then the thread is now will go and invoke method A. Let's see now what happens to the thread stack when, when it goes on to execute method A. You can see A is added. And where is this X is equal to one is going to be stored? x is a local variable where is this variable going to be stored and the one is a pre, is a value one where is this one going to be stored friends since x is a local variable 
If it's a local variable, it's going to be stored in the threads stack frame itself. It's going to be stored in the threads stack itself. And the value, if it's a primitive data type, one is a primitive data type, it's also stored here in the thread stack itself. Okay. Now after doing this, thread goes on to invoke method B. Now let's see what happens to the to the thread stack when it goes on to execute method B. You can see method B is now added to the thread stack. Now where is this object going to be created? The car object, where is it going to be created? Okay. And first of all, the car as a class definition, that is a car.class is present. That needs to be loaded into the memory. That is going to be loaded in this meta space region. You see it's loaded in this meta space region. And this car, since a complex data type, it's an object, it's going to be loaded into this eng generation because a newly created object, it goes in here. And this variable, since it's a local variable, it is stored in the thread stack itself. You can see it's stored in the thread stack itself. Now thread goes on to invoke method C. Now let's see what happens to uh, the thread stack. It comes here, the threads, the method C is added to the thread stack frame. And then now we can see this, there is this primitive data type float Z. It's a local variable, so it's stored in the thread stack itself. The value 2.11 is also stored here. Right? Okay. Now friends, this thread stack, can it grow infinitely? Can it grow infinitely? No, it cannot grow infinitely. This thread stack size is governed by this JVM argument called as dash XSS. This thread stack size, you can set it as a 1 MB, 2 MB, 512 kilobytes, whatever you set. Let's say I set it as 1 MB. And if you keep on adding to the thread stack frame, it, got, it gets populated. And when it goes beyond that 1 MB, that is this XSS limit, that's when you are going to get stack overflow error. Right? There's a demo following this, we will look at that. right? Okay, now let's come back to this uh, slide. Now the thread has ex executed all the methods in this program. Now it has to start exiting from each method. Now let's see what's happened to the thread stack, right? So now a thread is now going to exit method C. Now see what happens. The C is removed from the thread stack. Now thread is going to exit method B. Something very interesting happens here now, friends. Look at it. B is removed. But however, this car object is not removed. You see, only this B and this variable Y pointing to car object is removed. But the car object will not be removed. The car object will be removed only when there is a next full garbage collection, only when the next garbage collection event runs. That's when the car object is going to be removed. Until then, it's going to be resident in the memory. Okay. Now the thread is going to exit method A. Now let's see what happens in the thread stack. It goes. Now the thread is going to exit method, main method. Now it goes up. But friends, this thread stack will continue to remain here. It will continue to remain until that this thread exits the JVM. Until the thread terminates, this thread stack will be remaining there and it will occupy the allocated XSS memory. Right? Now friends, equipped with this knowledge, let's run a sample hypothetical program. Right? So this is that sample program and this is coming from an, a very simple uh, what we can call as a maybe a very basic chaos engineering project called as a buggy app. The link for that is going to be given. So it can this buggy app can simulate various type of performance problems. It can simulate out of memory error, CPU spike, stack overflow error. That's what we're going to be looking at. Look at this. This is a sample program which can simulate a stack overflow error. Look at this. There's a start method. There's a counter which is initialized to zero. Now look what's going on. This counter is incrementing that value. And then what it's saying, uh, and then once again it comes here, it says start. That means the start method is going to be called again. It's incrementing the counter. Start method is called again. So, so think about in the stack frame, what we saw. The stack frame is going to be fully populated with the start methods. Entire the stack frame is going to be populated with start method. And when we go beyond that stack limit, that XSS, then that's when you are going to get the stack overflow error to be printed. Right? Now let's run this program. Now, here is my stack overflow error. Now let me run this program with 1 MB as the size. Right? I'm setting this XSS as 1 MB and now let me run this program. When I run this program, I'm getting a stack overflow error. Right? You see the stack overflow error. 
and now when it prints it's going to print all the stack frames which was present in that stack in the thread you can see it is all with that with the start method see this entire thread stack is dumped and everything is as a start method now interesting thing here we are printing how many iterations it was able to go before it crashed with the stack overflow you can see it, it was able to go like 8691 iterations only after 8691 iterations it got a stack overflow right so friends now let's execute this program once again with setting the size as 2 mb right initially we ran it 1 mb now i'm setting it as 2 mb and then we are going to run now when i ran look at this still i got the stack overflow error right i still i got the stack overflow error and uh, this uh, stack is dumped and it has all the start methods in it right and if, but right now over if you see it has iterated like a 15000 times earlier last time when we ran with xss 1 mb it was going like a 8600 times now it has become like a 15000 times which is almost kind of doubled up but after doubling still it crashed okay so friends and stack overflow error is one of the easiest error to diagnose because when stack overflow error happens it's going to print what is there in the stack what are the methods which is there now it has the line number and the method so we can go there and see what's going on and then you can fix it okay and friends if you happen to like this uh, talk and if you want to learn more about java performance and troubleshooting you are welcome to attend my online masterclass the link to that masterclass is given in the description thank you friends